G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. In today's video, we are doing a fun one. And when I say fun, I mean fun for you and not so much for me. I thought it'd be a, a funny idea to put a post on the YouTube community tab asking you to put in your 2024 Eagles predictions, knowing full well that the Eagles are an easy punching bag at the moment. And I wanted to hear what the consensus was from both Eagles fans and non-Eagles fans. And I invited you to be as brutal as you wanted. And I was gonna react to your predictions in this video. Now, my only requirement for this video was I wanted people to say their actual opinion, not just like go ham on a comment just to try and ruffle feathers or whatever. I mean, I do have a sense of humor about the Eagles, of course, but what I was trying to do was kind of actually be able to have a conversation with you about what people think about the Eagles and try and refute some of the things or potentially I might even just agree with you. So we're just gonna have a conversation about the West Coast Eagles. Now there's like 58 comments in here. Thank you so much for everyone who jumped on, except you, Kat, he said something horrific, but nonetheless, I'm gonna go through them. I don't know if I have time to react to all of them, but I'm gonna pick out the ones that stand out to me and we're gonna discuss what I think of your hot West Coast Eagles takes. Jakey Parry says, Jack Darling to have a stinger of a year averaging less than a goal a game and gets traded for basically nothing. So I can't tell who's an Eagles fan and who's not. I recognize some names and some profile pictures will have a different team in there so that it's easy to tell. So I don't know if this is an Eagles fan's take. I think Jack Darling will at least kick a goal a game. Um, I think he was pretty average last year and kicked 26 from 21. I'm gonna back him in to have a better year than that. The thing about being traded though, at 32 years of age, he will be, I think. I don't think anyone's gonna take him and I don't think he'd be willing to leave. And I think he's contracted for one more. So uh, as bad as his season might get, I think that he is not going to get traded. But I agree that if he did, hypothetically, it wouldn't be for much. Eagles don't win a game all season and Finn McRae for Brownlow and Common. Okay, so I don't know how serious that is. Um, we're definitely gonna win a game, but AFL Snap says Eagles win five games. I think that's pretty realistic. That's a reasonable take. And I wouldn't be upset about that. If you'd offer it to me now though, I'd say no. I'd rather, you know, roll the dice and see if we can go for six or seven. That would be amazing. Hazard 5190 says West Coast to lose to every side in the bottom 10 except beat two teams who make the top eight. It's not a bad prediction. Obviously, I, I think we'll be able to beat some of those teams in the bottom 10, but um, sometimes it goes like that. So who do we beat? We had two wins against, uh, well, first of all, we beat the GWS Giants. They made a prelim, albeit they weren't playing in amazing form at the start of the season. We beat the Bulldogs at the end of the year. They did miss finals. So we, we clearly just beat two teams randomly that we probably shouldn't have. The other one was North Melbourne, and we, we traded those games one-on-one. -on -one. So interesting prediction. I don't mind that. Ozfighter says Eagles for the eight, but there's a laughing emoji. I presume that's a joke. Uh, James Patmore reckons Eagles win six games. Yeah, six games would be good. That would double it from last year. Fidget Frio Man says Eagles 16th or 17th and Richmond or Frio who, and he wants JL sacked because his poor coaching is ruining the club will dramatically slide. Wow, so he slapped a Fremantle prediction in there but it's a negative Fremantle prediction. That is a huge call. I would love to finish higher than Fremantle next year just because, you know, we kind of make up for all the crap I've copped in the last two years. But there you go. I don't know if I see Fremantle finishing that low. Richmond maybe if the ass absolutely falls out of them but, you know, who knows? Jake9921 says Eagles finished bottom again, but they have a massive upside win, upset win against Collingwood. Um, yeah, this has 2022 vibes about it, where we inexplicably beat Collingwood at Marvel Stadium in one of the most hardest, I think I phrased it this way in my video essay about them. And I said that it's the hardest Eagles win to explain that I've ever seen. Like, I don't know how we did it. I think we kicked 14 goals three. That's a huge factor in that. But Collingwood obviously one point off a grand final in 2022. Protoin do European. Proto-Indo-European, sorry. <laughs> Says the Eagles upset the mighty Melbourne. I think we play them twice. I presume it's more likely to be Optus than the MCG. That being said, the dimensions of those grounds are similar and I don't think we play that much worse at the G, but Melbourne also play well in Perth as a result. So I suppose it could be either. Uh, that would require a serious off day from the Ds, but crazy things do happen. Sam McGill says another loss to a side scoring 200. I'm gonna say no chance assuming we don't have the same level of injuries. But I mean, that, that game was a bit weird because obviously a lot more went into that loss than simply just not players not being fit. Uh, they just stopped caring in that game. So I really hope that doesn't happen. 
But GMHBA in the final round of the season could be a contender. Even if Geelong don't have a good year, it's still a contender. Andrew Howden says, is anyone a chance to be highly read for the rising star? Wardlaw, for example, North Bias Law. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I don't think Harley Reid is my personal favorite. In fact, by the time you're watching this, I think I've just done a rising stars video and I think McKercher was my choice. So yeah, I don't think Harley Reid, I think he's a top candidate, like in the top three or four, but I don't necessarily think he's a raging favorite to win that award. I think it, it can be a little bit more random than that. T Tanu Hudson says they have another horrible injury run, maybe 2022 kind of bad level. God, that's dark. And they have four more defeats by 100 points. Okay, so I just straight up disagree with this. I can't predict the injury run. That being said, neither can you. But I, you know, we're just having fun here. I realize that. Uh, well, you are. And uh, four or more defeats by 100 points. But the only way we, we have results like that is if I think, you know, that you get the first part of your prediction right in that we have a horrible injury run like 2022. Um, this time there's no COVID. I don't know. I'd love to sit here and defend that we won't have injuries, but... I'm a little bit gun shy, as you can understand. Neon Blue says they beat Fremantle twice. Wow. So there's there's a lot of anti-Fremantle belief out there um, in the Eastern States media in particular. Uh, well, not media, but the Eastern States football community, the followers as well. Basing, you know, somewhat on my comments and, and what is being said in the media, there's not a lot of Fremantle love. I mean, don't get me wrong. I get it. They wear purple. But I do think that I can't see them sliding into the bottom four, to be honest. Brooklyn Keynes, shout out, is a member of the channel and says, West Coast to beat the Bulldogs again in 2024 to prove the 2023 result was not a fluke. Sorry, Brooklyn, remind me. I can't remember if you're a Bulldogs fan. I think you are, right? If you're a Bulldogs fan, th that is crazy. That is a crazy prediction. I think the Eagles really ruffled some feathers with that upset win. Like you see the reaction, um, particularly of like Bulldogs fans screaming at the players after they walked off the field. That definitely left a mark. That definitely left a mark. I mean, if it's at Marvel Stadium, we're a decent team at Marvel for some reason. Like some of our best wins in the last two years against Collingwood and the Bulldogs were both at Marvel Stadium um, in games that we played well at. We nearly beat Essendon there. So the ground itself, we seem to do well at. I'd argue we're almost a better chance against the Dogs if it's at Marvel than if it's at Optus. I don't feel like we have too many happy memories against the Bulldogs at Optus. But that being said, I think if we play the Bulldogs again, they're not gonna let it happen again. So we'll see. Spam Assist says, Elliot Yo finally managed to string together a run of 16 games straight. That would automatically put him in the the, the, that's the highest game tally he's had since 2019 if he hits 16 in a row uh, without injury concerns until a season ending calf injury takes him out unfortunately like this prediction is just like a great one unfortunately in terms of like being realistic I really hope that's not true I think I hope he has a big year he's training the house down but we've heard that before Hayden 51 minutes ago says the injury crisis continues in 2024 prompting an even bigger list overhaul than previously seen so what, the factors that go into a season or a list overhaul are basically how many players are out of contract. So I think that includes Gaff and Yo in terms of the senior players. And then there's a few like fringe players as well. So I think it'll be similar. The thing is, I don't know if, uh, if going through a massive lift overhaul all in one hit is necessarily a good move. I, I, I've criticized North for doing it in the past, but you, you should only really cut the amount of players that you can replace with decent draft picks, in my opinion, unless you're trading in or getting through free agency or whatever. But if you're just replacing them with like pick 70 or a delisted free agent, then that's where it gets questionable. So regardless of what happens here this year, I don't want us you know, cutting more than seven or eight players. I think that's probably the upper end of what I'd want. Tom Sarto says, bottom four, but we'll have a lot of fun along the way. I like that one. It's actually a good prediction. Yeah, I think bottom four and having fun this year is, is a reasonable thing to hope for at West Coast. You know, if we finish 15th, that's still bottom four, but also, you know, a fairly good improvement. And I don't feel like we had a lot of fun in the last two years. You know, sometimes rebuilding is fun. You get to look forward to seeing growth of players. And, you know, we, we've been robbed of that a little bit through injury and, and stuff like that. And specifically, I mean, like young players who start their careers well at West Coast and then missing large periods. But we had some fun in 23, but we also had a lot of pain. Shadow Light says, Eagles to finish 18th for a consecutive year. Simpson gets fired mid-season as the scapegoat to West Coast problems. Turmoil for West Coast unfortunately worsens as they fail to win a single game in the latter half of the year as veterans injuries wreak havoc once again. This is dark shadow light. I expected better from you. I'm just kidding. Um, so finished 18th, the second year in a row. I'm not betting on it, but it's, it's not a controversial take at all, naturally. Simpson could get fired, but I do think that's got to depend on like how we're playing. So the thing is we can improve a lot in the way we play our footy and look a lot better and still be 18th mid-season. So that doesn't necessarily 
uh, result in Simno getting sacked, in my opinion. However, if it's trending like there was in 2023, then you'd expect he'd be gone for sure. So I presume you're alluding to the fact that it's going to be bad again. Failing to win a game in the second half of the year, that hurts me, bro. Um, veterans injuries wreaking havoc. So the good thing is we've probably cleared out a few more veterans, obviously, with uh, three basically club legends somewhat that we didn't get a lot out of for a few years there. You know, Shui played 10 games, Hearn 13, Nat Nui didn't play. So the, the the amount of veterans that we're, we're a little bit vulnerable with has shrunk. So hopefully that results in something better, but naturally I hope you're wrong, Shadowlight. Susie reckons even though Brisbane are probably gonna win the flag, we'll pull off an upset of the season against them when we play them at Optus. Yeah, that, so it's the first time we ever played Brisbane at Optus. I don't know what to expect of that game. I could easily see us getting slaughtered, but I'm not too sure how they go against Frio when they play there. I think the last couple of times they've come there, it's at least been close. Frio might have even jagged one. So I don't know what to expect, but that would be, that'd be a great result. Rick Pollard says, bottom of the ladder, four wins. I can't see how they improve much in comparison to North and Hawks. So uh, to make a case for West Coast improving well against those sides, if you assume that we have a normal injury run, our best 22 is at least far more experienced than North's and older and more mature. North have cut a lot of experience too, which you know probably has been swept under the rug a little bit because they had such an exciting off season getting in the plays that they did. But they are 18th in experience and uh, age of any team in the AFL. So I think when you consider how much a mature talent is coming back into the West Coast 22, that's my reason for improving. I'm not saying it's locked in. I just said that's the reason for improving. Whereas North Melbourne are probably going to be still giving games to guys who are a little bit young, like McCurch is going to play, Dersma might as well. Wardlow's only played eight games. As for Hawthorne, I don't necessarily think we're going to improve and overcome Hawthorne. Even best case scenario, I don't think that's really on the agenda for us in 2024. But you also factor in teams capitulate as well. There could be teams higher on the ladder that could capitulate. Some people say it's Geelong, some people say it's Richmond. Um, without getting stuck into who I think that will be, that t does tend to happen. Jake says six wins, one draw, 14th place. Uh, that would be good. Would six wins be enough to get 14th place? I feel like last year it wouldn't have, uh, but it, it could be possible. They beat the tw Saints twice two weeks apart and have a very comfortable win in round 23 over Geelong. Jake, Google what West Coast record is at GMHBA, not even just against Geelong, like against Sydney too in 2021. Bruh, bruh, I reckon we could lose that game by over 100 points easily, easily. Beating the Saints, I, I would be surprised. I think the Saints will be good this year. But we did play well against them in Perth, so we'll see. UCAT thinks the entire 23 will snap their legs in round one. You know what? You know what? It's almost been the case before. Jason Gilby gets called up from the waffle, kicks a bag of six, first team to concede 300. Yeah, thanks, UCAT. Get out of it. Word, he says, darling, force out of the best 22 by an emerging key forward like Waterman or Marek. So I've got optimism that Waterman and Marek are going to have good seasons, naturally. I think that Marek might start in the team based on what I'm hearing. I think he could play more of as a high half forward to some extent as a link-up player in the same way that Waterman would. So Darling starts in that team. So it is entirely possible that he gets forced out, um, but I'm, I'm going to bet against it. I think Darling will have a decent year. Got a few from James Hodgkin. Uh, Bailey Williams to kick 40 goals. Oh, I can't see it happening, but I'd love that to happen. Clay Hall to get a Rising Star nomination. Could see it happening because he seems to be training well and has a proven ability of rising to the level that he plays at quite well. So like played most of the year in per Peel senior team and perform well. So I, I think that's actually completely realistic. McGovern and Yo to retire. If McGovern gets a bad injury, maybe, but he is contracted next year, Yo could be possible on the same logic, but he, he is out of contract. Gaff to go to Melbourne and get a one-year contract with North or Hawthorne. I think Gaff would have to improve on last year to even warrant getting a one-year deal at North, which you know wasn't meant to come out backhanded at North Melbourne, but I don't think this version of Gaff would get a contract anywhere else at the moment. But I do have belief he could have a better season than last year. Harley Reid to win the Rising Star, that'd be great. Kelly back-to-back, -back, best and fairest, I see that happening. Darling to earn a one-year contract and play his final season next year and get to 300. Yep, I think that's a good prediction too. I think he probably has one more in him. I think if he plays every game this season, he will end on 298 games. So that makes perfect sense. And Jinby runner up best and fairest. That is saucy. I like it. Nicholas Jopson says, the Eagles don't have a single win by round 10. Pressure on Simpson becomes too much. Simpson is replaced after round 11. Eagles win this first week without Simpson, finish the season on four wins and a draw. All of which happens after Simpson is gone. I, um, I presume the underlying belief on this is that Simpson 
is the is a huge problem. Maybe I'm reading too much into it because sometimes when teams change coaches, they just get better. But the risk of being a broken record, the only way that happens if we're 0-10 or whatever, uh, is if we don't have the players available to us. Zoidberg Skywalker says the Goldman will once again be one by four that played West Coast. Hey, come on, or played West Coast twice. I mean, that prediction itself could be true, but because that's kind of open-ended. Hopefully we are not a team that lets forwards kick multiple bags of 10. Was it multiple bags of 10, Tex and Kerno? Yeah, I think it was. Alexander White says, McGovern, Darling and Gaff announced their retirements. I would back in Darling and McGovern to play one more. I'll say Gaff retires. Fleur the creator, West Coast attempt to pry Sam Taylor from GWS. The academy and father-son dilution of the 2024 draft means that West Coast first pick is amongst what's offered. So Sam Taylor is a fair way off being a, um, a free agent, which means it would have to be a trade. Do we do that? I reckon we probably would. You know, if we have pick one or two, maybe. Getting Sam Taylor, same age as Oscar Allen, absolute star, I'd be happy with that. Whether we get him is a completely different question, absolutely, but I like that suggestion from Fleur. Master Yak, assuming a league average run of injuries will probably be a shambles for the first half of the season, but once the young boys get used to consistency in their positions and game plan, we will be more competitive and probably upset a top eight team. Solid prediction, that is all completely reasonable. It's not just as well the, the young players getting experience. I think it's these guys getting experience playing with each other because the best 22 has just changed. Even the senior players have missed football They've all got to acclimatize. So I think the logic that we could start the season slowly from a commitment to game style point of view is completely sound. It also predicts six wins, finishing 15th, North Richmond and possibly Frio below us. I would take that in a heartbeat. 15th over Frio. <laughs> for the record, I don't hate Frio, but naturally I am sick of being the joke of WA football for a little while. This is a good one from Carlo Carboni. West Coast develop a game plan similar to the Hawks and Crows of recent years where their main focus is pressure and team defense. This will allow them to not get flogged and stay in games against skillful opponents. That is completely logical and something I definitely noticed about Adelaide, their pressure and their ability to play above their weight even a few years ago really stood out to me. Depending on the day, this tenacity can top, top end opponents, allowing their midfield a time to move the ball precisely through Reed, Jindy and Kelly. I like it. So yes, this is from a Crow support and this makes sense. This actually re literally reminds me of when Adelaide beat Geelong in round one of 2021. This will come into effect halfway through the year, likely some upsets at their home ground. I like it. Thanks, Carlo. Appreciate your input. That's a really insightful comment and hopefully we do see something like that. Noah says, Yo gets top three in the Eagles best and fairest. Absolutely. He, I think he wins it if he plays enough games. He just needs to play 20 plus games, which you know hasn't happened for about four years. Samantha says more consistency in performance as availability becomes more settled, hopefully, with regards to changes in staff in strength and conditioning. Predicting some organic improvement, six to eight wins, that would be good. 12 would be an optimistic outlook, absolutely. Also predicting a 1-1 derby outcome. Hopefully, like we did give the Dockers a good shake in that first one before the injuries hit. We might not have won, but we at least sort of matched it with them and had a good intensity. So I don't think it's absolutely crazy, but we need, we need to see the 2023 version of Frio, not the 2022 one for sure. Eddie thinks they'll start to improve at least towards the end of the season. Yep, that makes sense. That darling bloke looks promising. We'd be keen to see him worry him, absolutely. And I presume Eddie is a Frio fan because he says if Frio lose either Derby, he's going to snap. Um, well, I mean this in the nicest way possible. I hope to see that happen, Eddie. Thorny says, especially given Hewitt's foot injury, there's a strong chance Clay Hall will start round one and play a majority of his games this year. A majority of games this year. He will poll higher in the rising star than Harley Reid. I like it. I don't see him doing better than Harley Reid in the rising star, but that would be an unreal result. If we're going to unearth Clay Hall, who gets higher than Harley Reid in the Rising Star, that would be sensational. But I am with you that he could start round one and play a fair bit of footy this year because it sounds like he's tearing it up. And like I said, kind of ready-made in a sense. Has a bit of an outside game, which helps. I think if he was just purely like an 18 year old extractor, he probably wouldn't find that many opportunities to play. Maybe that's what sets him apart from Cully, who probably got more opportunity and started to look a bit better when he played inside the board 50. Ben Partington says, West Coast to discover the true meaning of Christmas. It's nice. Nice, buddy. Sean Christie says, West Coast top of the ladder, win the grand final by 100, and Jinbi wins the Charlie. I like it, mate. That, um, with you on that, I can totally see that happening. Footy Flame says, Eagles to start three and three, wins to the doggies away, Tigers at home, and most importantly, a Western Derby win. Our first six of games are tough. If we're three and three, that is ridiculous. And we're probably in a spot to miss the bottom four if that happens, that would be unreal. I don't see us beating the doggies away. We could beat Richmond at home, but again, start underdogs for sure. I don't really like cheese, says Liam Duggan takes the next step into elite. I think I did pick him for our best and fairest this year. If he becomes elite, I'll be surprised. He's also probably going to be playing two roles 
goals this year, it sounds like. So, you know, unless he becomes like a late career Luke Hodge, like that would be unreal. Tom says, says, I think Cully will be seen as as important to our future midfielders, Hewitt, Jinby, and Harley by the end of the season. Mate, that would be an unreal result. Secondly, Kane Corns was forced to, would be forced to admit he was wrong about the young talent. Yeah, Kane Corns is way off in saying anything about the lack of young talent on the list. Like, look at the last three drafts, I would argue. That's just an ignorant comment for sure. But uh, I think Cully's behind the eight ball and he's also just, you know, he's recovering from an ACL and best case scenario, it's going to take him a little while, I think, to build confidence and continuity at AFL level. But mate, that would be an unreal surprise. Clinton, who is a Eagles member here for 19 years. Well done, mate. I think we will see Flynn really make the ruck position his own with Bailey Williams kicking 20 to 25. I think 20 to 25 would be a good result for Bailey Williams. And it does sound like Flynn could really add something with how he's going so far in 2024. Still think bottom four finish, but won't be disastrous considering Tasmania entering the competition with the compromised drafts. Really good point. I think uh, we don't know the extent to which drafts will be compromised, but you can imagine that young talent is going to be poached in a big way. So maybe getting a top five pick. I feel like looking this far out, getting a top five pick, pick four or five isn't that much worse than getting pick one this year. So, you know, if we still finish at the upper end of the bottom four, we're still in that position, but bottom four would be fine. And finally, because this video has gone a long time, sorry, I didn't get to read all of them. Captain Redbeard arr, says, my Eagles supporting neighbors bin went from red and white after the Swans, flog Swans flogging to black and white around 10 minutes after the grand final. That's hilarious. That is actually good banter. Assuming they're doing it jokingly. It's delicious every Monday bin day. <laughs> no, that's cool. Pass supported by I like your real outfit. I'm a West Australian. Thank you, Captain Redbeard. I appreciate that. Anyway, guys, thank you so much. I thought that was just a bit of fun to, to sort of get a feel for what people are saying about the Eagles. I, I didn't expect it to be glowingly positive, but some of it was positive. Um, but naturally, I'm an Eagles optimist, so I'm generally going to defend our prospects. But anyway, I appreciate you. And for now, I'll see you in the next video, guys. Cheers.